Hello, family. WTF, welcome to Friday. Marina again with the DBS This Morning Show. Let's see what's happening in the news desk, and we'll come right back. Good morning. Time now for the news with me, Timothy Polion. Mary Williams, the mother of Kimberly De Leon, claims that a cover-up is preventing her murdered daughter from getting justice. De Leon was fatally shot at her Mon residence on October 29, 2018. De Leon's death sparked outrage with impassioned appeals for swift justice, echoing throughout St. Lucia. Williams has criticized the police's investigation into the matter and has stated that only death will stop her from seeking justice. I will only stop fighting when I'm dead. You believe that people are trying to frustrate you into forgetting about the murder of your daughter? Look, the police is trying to frustrate me and I'm not going to put water in my mouth to say it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They come at me with all kinds of cheap shots. You understand? I'm not a fool. You see, I am not a fool. And when they come, I ask questions. Then sometimes they don't have answers to the questions that I'm asking. Maybe they think I'm too smart to be asking these questions. I don't know. But if that's my gift, that's my gift. I'm going to ask questions. It's my daughter who lost her life. In other news, as corporate Sinusha put their money where their mouth is in support of a major event on the island's calendar of activities, several positive changes were also announced. An official website for the Sinusha Jazz and Arts Festival has been launched to make festival information, schedules, tickets and site plans easier to access. This year, children under 12 years will receive a 50% discount, and those under 5 will enter free. The event runs from April 30th to May the 12th. You know, it's really special when the corporate community can come out and to really express their support and to actually make con um, stated contributions. It, it does cost money to organize the event, and I will betray our internal exchanges. It's always a fight in terms of how to use the resources and how much to give. And I'm always, you know, um, arguing if events company to, you know, control it. And they keep saying, look, we want to produce a world-class event. And a world-class event requires a certain standard to be met. Finally from us, the local Rastafarian community is appealing for it to be given the lead in benefiting from any commercialization of the marijuana plant through a regulated industry. Sinusha has over the last two administrations been seeking to facilitate the process through a series of consultations. The body representing St. Lucia's Rastafarians is also hoping that the use of the herb for ritual or ritualistic purposes will be readily acceptable. St. Lucia decriminalized the personal use of 30 grams of cannabis or less in 2021. A second piece of legislation cleared the records of people caught with less than 30 grams of cannabis. One of the main focus for me would be to open up the organization to a more pan-African sort of reception because oftentimes we focus a lot on just the experience and the situation and what we have gone through as a Rastafari community. But we have also have to be cognizant of the fact that you know, it's not only the Rastafari community in particular that has gone through such tribulations, but other persons as well, especially persons with, 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 in using cannabis. And as a broadcast, thank you so much for watching. It's a very safe and enjoyable Friday and weekend. Please join us at noon for our next news major, the Lunchtime Report. I'm Timothy Polio. Good morning. Okay, Timothy, thank you so much. We need to take a short break. And we're coming back after this with our amazing features while we zero in on jazz. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're going to be this Friday. We'll be back. recently witnessed the signing over ceremony or the check presentation ceremony for the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival and it was quite an atmosphere um, but you know definitely an opportunity to tap in with the Minister of Tourism Mr. Hiller um, to get his feel at, as we get closer and closer to the, the official um, kickoff to St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. All right we're here of course with the Minister uh, Minister Hiller it's that time again the buzz is definitely on um, there is this in you know like an infusion like you know you just come from the Lenten season and we were anticipating and you want this. To explode. We want that is exactly 
exactly the word explosion yeah. is what it is and it certainly it, it definitely it, it lived up to that because we're yeah. getting this influx of energy um, and excitement mm -hmm. concerning the, the jazz and arts festival this morning we are witnessing the presentation check presentation yes. from your sponsors yeah. which is quite a vital part of this as well mm -hmm. so we hit the ground running uh, it's, it's well, I mean today say. was really special I mean you would have seen a number of sponsors who've committed to supporting the festival this year and this year you, you would notice that we have a real special emphasis on certain of our say local um, flavors the opening of jazz will feature the Henry segment in a I big way of and of course when you add to that you know um, Romaine you know would be there and, and a few others and then the arts component and the return of live performances yes. at the Derrick Walcott Square. That used to be the biggest line. Everybody in town, lunchtime, right. go and lime on the square. And to bring that back in terms of the live performances will be epic. And of course, the big drum project, which will be my favorite for this year's art festival, to actually witness St. Lucian's beating drum, African drums like never before, for me will be really special. And the sponsors have come out. They've seen what we've been um, promoting and they have come out in a big way to, to, to support the festival. And of course, you know, the main stage from Kingdom Night, um, you know, Marshall on the Friday, Berries, yes. and then of course you have Davido and then yes. Supply Babyface. It's going to be an epic festival. And I can't wait to see Xavier's art exhibition. <laughs> yes. I heard yes. over 500 pieces of art oh will God. be on display. Um, he's our icon person for this year. So it's really, really going to be an epic. Last year was our biggest ever in terms of the, the festival. Right. The ticket sales, the attendance was out of this um, world. And of course, we're expecting this year already challenges to get rooms, to get flights. So it's really going to be special. And we're really grateful to the sponsors for coming out in a big way this year, bigger than last year. Mm -hmm. So you could see, again, the corporate community um, commitment is growing. So we're really excited about right. it. I'm happy you said growing because I was going to ask you in, um, in, in relation to last year in terms of the sponsorship yeah, yeah. and what you're seeing. Are you seeing an, a, a yeah, bigger pu yeah, push? Yeah. No, for sure. You, you can see it has grown from last year. New um, entities have come on and of course, you know, the value has gone on as well. So we now need to sit down and figure out how we can bring maximum value to the sponsors so they'll right. grow even more next year. And we still have some more sponsors that will come on. But we're really happy with what we're seeing. Ticket sales are even better than last year. Right. So, you know, we know we're going to do <laughs> something special this year. Oh my God. Well, certainly I was going to ask that, but you covered all that because you're an expert in that department. Yeah. So you already covered. I was going to ask you because tickets are already on sale online. Yeah. You yeah. can get your online presence to get your tickets. So I was going to ask you what is the you know the, 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 tra the, the traffic like over there? It is excellent. Um, better than last year. I mean, when we measured, you know, where we were this time last year, we were ahead. So um, we're really glad about that. In fact, I'll, I'll share with you a couple of days ago, the chairman of the events company came to me and he said to me, look, Minister, you wanted us um, for the opening of jazz to, to, to have a smaller footprint um, because of preparations for cricket whatnot. Right. He's saying based on ticket sales, we need more space than last right. year. So you have to change your, your decision on this. So I had to agree for us to use the entire field now because just the numbers we've seen already, mm -hmm. um, what we were planning to do just can't work because of the numbers. So we're really happy to see that and we want to thank St. Lucians and our regional you know, brothers and sisters who will be coming for the opening and for main stage. Wonderful. I was just going to, in our, in our final um, um, closing um, chat, I was going to ask you in terms of on the ground now, because you're the minister, you, you are the minister of tourism. Um, how is it looking? How do you see this? Um, you know, it, how would that make you smile yeah. to, you know, to show that, hey, I am, I, this is happening and this is, you know, this is how my people are benefiting from this. Yeah. Well, today they, they launch a campaign beyond the stage, you know, benefits oh. beyond the stage. And when you see the testimonials from, you know, um, cosmetologists, from the service providers, the restaurants, um, all the different sectors where local solutions can actually benefit from the festival. And I was really pleased to see that testimonial series that they'll be launching. But even more than that now, the communities, you know, communities are getting involved for carnival, for jazz, for emancipation, for Creole heritage. So we, we have a number of months where communities can actually be part of the vibe and be part of celebrating, you know, the culture and our creative expression. 
questions. At the same time, earning revenue and creating some little economic, you know, vibe for persons in the different communities. So I'm really happy with that. <laughs> I can really, tell. really happy. I certainly can tell. Yeah, yeah. And I don't blame you. Uh, Minister, what, what's the take home? Well, to say to all St. Lucians, thank you so much for your support for the festival over the years. This year will be real epic. You have to be there. You have to be at the opening. Support one of the community jazz, whether it is Morshi or Deriso or Soufre or Fordo or Bexo, support one of them and you must come main stage. Either Kingdom Night or the Friday or the Saturday or Sunday, all of, all them. of them. Just be there and enjoy it. <laughs> Certainly, all the best. And yeah, we, you know, you, we look yeah. forward to a bumper season yeah, again. Yeah, thank you. Thank very you. talking jazz and of course um, jazz comes around each time a year around that time and a lot of things have to go a lot of little behind the scenes have to take place for we to enjoy the jazz that we know and love all right so we caught up with Miniva Ross Miniva Ross is, is you know sort of in that department the branding the marketing the underground sort of preparation for the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival here she is telling us some more no, you see how cozy I am. I'm, that's that's how we are. You know, we are like that. You know, she is. She she. I have. We, we interact a lot because she's doing a lot. She's this Miniva Ross right here is the marketing, branding, branding, branding and, communications. Uh, and communications manager, manager events company at events Lucia. company of Saint Lucia. Now, that being said, Saint Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. Right after that will be carnival. So much things coming out right under you there. You must be such a busy woman. So we just want to tap into your energy, the little that we have to take out of, um, to find out what is it like putting together these, you know, th th this marketing strategy, the branding strategy the, for something like St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival. Um, well, thanks, of course, for the opportunity to <laughs> speak with you, Maureen. Always a pleasure. Uh, it's quite involved. Mm. Thankfully, uh, the events company of St. Lucia, we don't have to do it alone. Okay. Um, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, who are the executive producers for the festival, yeah, they take the lead on quite a few things, um, including marketing, especially in the regional territories and the international territories. The Events Company of St. Lucia is responsible for local marketing. So our messaging, slightly different. I mean, overall, of course, we're selling a world-class event, regardless of which territory we're pitching to. But... Um, for us at Events Company of St. Lucia, our focus is primarily local. So we would tailor messages um, for the local audience, uh, branding, uh, outdoor signage, whatever is required, activations on the ground, promotions on the ground. And of course, we deal very much, very closely with the local media mm -hmm. as well to ensure that the information is being disseminated to, our, to the publics so that they know what is, is coming, what to expect, and of course, to build hype, create excitement uh, leading into the festival. Right, wonderful. So far, uh, this is where we are. We are heading into the opening um, in the 30th of this month. Mm -hmm. um, where are you at on the ground with this? You know, what is the energy on the ground? Like you said, you're dealing directly with on the ground, the locals, the, you know, the media. Where, what, what is the energy um, source like? Well, um, speaking um, from an overarching um, mandate for Events Company of St. Lucia, of course, we are responsible for the event execution. Mm. That was that is what our e our agency would handle, and so I know that um, for months now, we've been in and out of the venues, um, dealing with all of the essential services, working closely with the uh, Royal St. Lucia Police Force, traffic departments, the Marine Unit this year because we're offering, you know, uh, a, a sail a sailing option to to um, navigate or get to the festival. Um, so there's a lot going into that. There's a, a very involved, full body, robust traffic management plan that is being put together. But we're in the venues. We're at the venues. Of course, we have three main venues that we're looking at. Mindo Phillip Park, where mm -hmm. the opening is going to be held on April 30th. And then we have the pavilion on the ramp, which mm -hmm. will house um, where we will stage the pure jazz events, two nights. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have as well the main events at Pigeon Island. So there are three venues that we're working across. <laughs> and that is involved because so much has to be taken into account. You have vending that has to be taken into account. You have infrastructure, stage, mm -hmm. lighting, you know, um, of course, overall safety and security for patrons. All of that is being considered um, and it is involved. We have a, a full production team. They're largely on the ground. Mm -hmm. My department, um, we would handle marketing, but wherever we need to um, get involved you know and lend support we will because obviously 
um, even our inputs on the ground would include setting up directional signage and Right. providing um, messages on the ground that help that help persons navigate the events you know safely and in, in, in a holistic way and to to enjoy to get the best that they can out of the festival right. so there's a lot that goes into event planning um, and so a lot of times persons show up they have a fantastic time and they don't realize you know that it's been a year yeah. in the making um, and even the boil down there's some of us and, and many of us from all the agencies we have CDF we have the Central Tourism Authority leading and of course event St. Lucia for many of the agencies there's there are sleepless nights for us um, but we love what we do we're right. passionate about what we do we enjoy it and and that is why we're able to continue doing it and we of course always put our best foot forward right. because we think that you know this is this is a world-class brand and so we aim to always hit that mark and exceed those expectations where we can so it's really an exciting time you know coming right. off of you know 2020 and 2021 when they were no events in 2022 right. to have 2023 and to follow through with 2024 um, the St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival is going to be an epic epic it's going to be of epic proportions. From your standpoint from your um, your department what will be um, considered an awesome and successful um, jazz um, event 2023? Ticket sales, ticket sales, <laughs> ticket sales, ticket sales, ticket sales um, people on the ground, um, exciting engagements on the ground for events company of St. Lucia. Of course, SLTA is leading with sponsorship, but then once the sponsors get to us on the ground, we're working with them closely mm -hmm. to ensure that they're delivering on their promises. And they're also getting um, optimum you know, um, returns for their investment. So we're looking forward to working with all of the stakeholders and ensuring that the, the patrons who come to the event leave belly full. You know, and satisfied. So the branding and communications department, once on the ground, will be working with sponsors. Um, so we just want to see population, Absolutely. people. That that we first will be about logistics and the, the traffic management mm. and and you know these sort of things. Now on the ground, um, what would how can we as a populist that is part of this, like you said, world class event, um, help um, to 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 you know help all of this to, to just come together nicely? Well, the media is critical to getting this information out because it is quite a lot. As I mentioned, um, there is a traffic management plan that takes into account um, parking parking facilities outside of the venue. Um, it takes into account uh, a park uh, and sale option, mm -hmm. which means you can actually park at a certain location and then and get a boat into the venue. There are various things that are being considered and the full rollout will be sometime very soon. But um, the intention is for persons to have information, enough information that they can take in, apply, but also share forward. We will be using and we'll be utilizing every medium available to us, including word of mouth. So uh, we, we hope that St. Lucians will be fully supportive of this approach. Um, it is paramount that, that they, 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 they be guided by it, because obviously it has the stamp of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force as well, and they're the one, they're working, they're at the, the top of that, that um, that um, train, you know, leading us in the right direction. Because one of largely one of the challenges we've had is with managing traffic, both yeah, vehicular and pedestrian true. traffic. I know. And it can be a spoiler. Yes. You know, people will come and they would have an excellent time, but once leaving the venue, then they encounter challenges yes. with doing so, endless hours in traffic. Um, so we're trying to put together an approach that will mitigate or certainly lessen you know that that outcome and we think we you know there are quite a few new measures that have been put okay. in place so we're looking forward to unrolling that and what we would like from our our st lucians is for them to adhere to those yes. certainly support the effort and pass that information on to others and with, for our visitors it will be a little more challenging because they wouldn't know the road networks necessarily so guide them as well you know um let them know that this this is what what is expected um and i know the central tourism authority will do their part to ensure regionally and internationally that information is is put out there but obviously once they get into our space mm -hmm. then you know our, our St. Lucians need to all put their best foot forward and step up and help in any which way that they can to ensure that St. Lucians and patrons and visitors all have a fantastic time at the festival. You have your work cut out for you um, I don't envy you but I'm certainly here um, in any capacity Thanks that we can support. reach out we Thanks will definitely be here have a good one and, you too, and I look Maureen. forward to an awesome season.
everyone and welcome to this morning's Soka Size session. Leading the wine, we have Sarah, Lori, and Shani. Let's get ready to sweat with Soka Size. For this morning's workout, we will be doing a cardio Soka Jam routine to Do Play That by Marshall Montano. Let's get moving. So we're gonna begin with our right leg, toe tapping, hands side to side. Four, three, two, one, yeah. and when you come out, you come up proper, girl. You're looking good. Oh, I like your shock yard when you dance up on this. Three, two, one, pump the arm. Pump. We're moving the core as well. If you're riding, why not come up properly? Don't better, better. Four, three, two. Now we're gonna shuffle. Push. Move those legs. Turn. 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 Gonna tap, tap, and pull. Tap. Four. Three. Two. Left leg. Let's go. And by low impact, you can skip the jump and just tap the leg. Four. Three. Two. Pump and drop it up on another lady that is smooth. Four, three, two, shuffle, push, bumper, turn, bumper, 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 turn, bumper, bumper, make a turn, bumper, bumper, pull and. Four, three, two, one, stop. Four, three, two, one, pump. That was this morning's session. Thank you for choosing to flaunt with Soka Size. We hope that you're feeling sexy, sultry, and strong. Woo. All right, well, guess, guess what? That's it, that's our show. That's our way we wrap up the week for you. Let's do it again on Monday, God's willing. Go on out and have a safe and enjoyable weekend. And let's do this again on Monday now.